Hello, my name is Diana Robinson with the Fuchin Workers Alliance, a national coalition of worker-based organizations whose members are organizing to improve wages and working conditions for all workers along the food chain. Four food occupations and industries include farm workers, slaughterhouse and other processing facility workers, warehouse workers, grocery store workers, restaurant and food service workers. These particular segments employ in total close to 20 million workers who constitute one-sixth of the nation's entire workforce, the largest segment of workers in our economy. Most jobs in the food system provide low wages with little access to health benefits and opportunities for advancement. In a recent survey conducted by the Food Chain Workers Alliance, 86% of workers reported earning low or poverty wages. Many workers report fluctuation in regard to wages and hours, making it difficult to plan, pay bills, and maintain economic stability. Poverty level wages make it difficult for food system workers to provide for themselves and their families. Yo trabajo en lo que es la industria agrícola, uh, donde muchas veces enfrentamos a uh, robo de salario, bajos salarios que no ha cambiado desde hace 30 años, desde 1978, siguen pagando uh, el mismo salario. Uno de eso es que, por ejemplo, para poder sacar, uh, ganar 50 dólares, tienes que piscar uh, más de 2 toneladas y media de tomate para poder ganar 50 dólares. Una cantidad de cubeta de tomate que son más o menos 145. Uh, la cubeta pesa 32 libras. Almost one quarter of all workers surveyed reported not receiving the minimum wage. More than one third reported experiencing wage theft, meaning they did not receive minimum wage, overtime pay, for all of their tips. In addition, several workers in the food system reported earning a piece rate rather than an hourly wage, making their wages dependent upon their physical stamina, health, and their ability to concentrate on a daily basis. I came to work and they sent me home. I was only getting two hours, if that. They were supposed to give me four hours paid time. Mm -hmm. This company told me when I got hired that I was getting paid 10 hours an hour, but then they changed that to production without was giving me a note, like say if it's a truck, like, like a truck with 5,000 boxes. They pay you by production rate, which is for each 5,000 boxes you move off this truck, this truck is only worth $62. There's no way that you can finish a 5,000 box truck within eight hours. So that means by my production rate, I'm working eight hours today for 62 hours, I mean for $62 an hour, and then I come to work tomorrow and still have to work this truck and it's still $62 an hour, I mean, per day. So I'm working today for free, basically, and 20, 12, like, seven hours for free for this day. Perhaps not surprisingly, given how little they earn per hour, workers in the food system report working long hours. 40% of workers surveyed reported working 40 hours or more per week for their primary employer. Many of these workers reported not receiving overtime pay. Trabajaba de tres y media a dos de la mañana. Con eso le voy a decir que el tiempo, el tiempo normal de ocho horas, ese se lo pagan a uno. El tiempo extra ya no lo pagan. The ability to take lunch and other short breaks can be important to food workers. Almost one quarter of all workers surveyed reported not receiving a 30 minute lunch break when they worked an eight hour day. And 22% reported not receiving a 10 minute break. In some cases, Workers reported not receiving bathroom breaks, a situation that can result in illness and hospitalization. The boss told me that I was using the bathroom too much, so he would go and stand outside the door, where as I stopped using the bathroom, we got a real bad bladder, and I passed out. <coughs> so I went to the doctor and called in the next day. The boss says, if you don't come to work, you lose your job, and there's four more people waiting for yours position. So I went to work. I went to work sick every day. According to a retail worker at a Walmart, workers routinely skip their breaks to keep up with the day's workload. The first break we all take it. Some of them they don't because they have so much work to do. Mm -hmm. And I always tell them your break is your break, you know. Right. And your lunch you have to, to uh, clock out. Right. And some of them they don't take their breaks and I tell them you get hurt during your break, you will get fired. But managers see them that they don't take breaks, so they just like, they don't see it, but they like it because work has to be, you know, right. work will be done, yeah. 
The tipping system in the restaurant industry has allowed for restaurant employers lobbying groups to maintain a very low hourly wage for tipped employees. Yeah, but you know what? Making $2.13 plus tips as a full-time person over the past six years that I lived in D.C. Uh, working on tips full-time that uh, I couldn't actually pay my rent. I have been evicted before. Although the majority of jobs in the food system are low paid, the Food Chain Workers Alliance survey did find that 13.5% of workers earn a livable wage. Many workers are organizing with unions and worker centers to improve their jobs and to improve the food system. The Coalition of Immokalee Workers has successfully won a fair food agreement with major corporations to pay a penny more per pound of tomatoes directly to the farm workers who pick them, as well as institute worker health and safety committees a complaint investigation and resolution process, and much more. So, pues, no solo se hizo así nomás, o se levantaron y dijeron, vamos a firmar un acuerdo con la coalición. Fue gracias a la gente que nos apoya, como estudiantes a nivel nacional que nos apoya, a gente de fe o iglesias a nivel nacional, eh, comunidades, organizaciones que nos apoyan en esta campaña y han hecho que, más que nada, los consumidores han hablado para mejorar las condiciones de los trabajadores. Union contracts also provide higher wages, benefits, and protection for workers from discrimination. As far as I'm concerned, the union keeps the workplace fair. And what I mean by that is, there's a lot of things that would probably be going on if we didn't have a union. You can get fired for no reason. At least with the union, you have to go through a protocol. They have to respond to my union rep, my union res rep responds to them. When I got this position that I wanted, the manager, the managing position, they were paying me $20 and I think I was getting like $20.27 an hour. I was so excited. I was so excited. I just thought I was sitting on top of the world. So I took the $20.27. Then I happened to get called to do an interview for the Food Workers Alliance. And when I was asked the question of what my rate is, my union rep happened to be sitting there and he's like, $20.27? Like, that's wrong. Come to find out, I was supposed to be making $25.76. So the next day, my union rep sent human resources a message. And a week later, that next Thursday, my next pay period, they sent, they cut me a check for $4,000 and some change to balance me off. And now my rate is correct and I make $25.76 every hour for 40 hours a week. While employers in the food system save costs by paying low wages, not offering benefits or adequate meal or rest breaks, these cost savings result in public tax dollars subsidizing employers because workers must then rely on health and public assistance programs. For example, in its sad irony, food workers use food stamps at one and a half times the rate of the general workforce. Simply introducing organic, sustainable, locally sourced, and healthy food products into the market is not sufficient to ensure consumer health and consumer well-being. Sustainable labor practices are an essential component to a sustainable food system. Policymakers and employers should improve wages by guaranteeing food system workers a living wage. Go to foodchainworkers.org to find out how you can support an increase in the minimum wage for all workers, including tipped workers. Yeah.